I'm Ford. I'm Daniela. I'm Zach. And I'm Jake. And this is our college edition disc thrower. Uh, we chose this because we figured we could solve for the curvilinear acceleration using the force of the spring and the time it takes to throw. And then whenever it's in the air, we can solve for projectile motion and the velocity in the X and Y axis. The list of materials includes one and a half inch by one and a half inch square tubing, a trampoline spring, a refurbished arm from an old clay bird thrower, a half inch by three inch piece of steel for the latch that holds the arm, a three eighths by five inch bolt, a three eighths nut, and a two and two feet of string. Building this uh, clay thrower, first out we started with this. Uh, piece of angle with holes in it and uh, after making our pro prototype we found out really quick that it wasn't going to be strong enough to hold our spring because it started bending in places and so it just didn't work very well and so we decided to brainstorm and so we came up with getting square tube with holes in it and it has held up a lot better than our angle. for the throw includes the weight of the disc which was 102 grams, the final distance which was 60.2 feet, the initial distance which was 0 feet, the time that the disc was in the air which was 1.2 seconds, and the angle of the throwing arm which was 30 degrees. <laughs> Calculations for our project, we started off with projectile motion. We were able to use the distance and the time to solve for the velocity at launch to be 32.78 feet per second. Then we move on to our curvy literature equations, where our acceleration is equal to the final velocity divided by the time it takes to reach that velocity. We know our V0 is zero. And we calculate our curvy linear acceleration to be 252.15 feet per second squared. After that, we use the mass and that acceleration to calculate the force. And the force applied on the pigeon is 78.39 newtons after using a conversion factor. And then also, to solve for the force of the spring, we know the difference in length, so we use the lever rule to solve the force of the spring to be 470.34 newtons. Lastly, the potential energy and the kinetic energy must stay consistent through because there's no work done. We used the formula for kinetic energy and got a kinetic energy of 5.09 joules, which means the potential energy must be the same. In conclusion, the college edition disc thrower was a kinematic problem brought to life. By gathering data, the disc thrower was identified as a projectile and curvilinear motion problem. From the information given previously, the disc required 78.39 newtons of force to give the disc a velocity of 32.78 feet per second and an acceleration of 252.15 feet per second. Some limitations observed during the project include material accessibility and the number of variables to be considered, such as the force of the spring and the length of the arm both which affect the acceleration and velocity of the disc. A suggestion to be taken in for the future is to find as many constants within the problem to simplify any calculations and to receive more accurate results.